Hello, my name is Lior Polak and I'm a Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, we will show you how you can tighten S3 permissions for your IAM users and roles using Access History for S3 Actions. Customers often tell us that when their teams and projects are just getting started, developers do not yet know the scope of access they require. For that reason, administrators may grant broad access to inspire innovation and agility. Over time, when usage patterns are established, customers want to ensure that they are always working towards least privilege for users and the applications they build. Some customers have told us they need a simple way to get the information that could help them determine the actual access and remove unused permissions without impacting the users or the applications using them. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a way to see what services and actions are actively being used? To help with this, AWS Identity and Access Management Access Advisor reports on the last time users and roles used each service so you can know whether you can restrict access. This helps for refining permissions to specific services, but customers also wanted to set more granular permissions to meet their security requirements. So we've listened to your asks, and now we include action level last access information starting with Amazon S3 Management Actions. This means you can tighten permissions to only the specific S3 actions that your users and applications use. Now, I'll walk you through an example to demonstrate how you identify unused S3 actions and reduce permissions for your IAM principles. In this example, a system administrator, Martha Rivera, is responsible for managing access to her company's IAM principles. She periodically reviews permissions and finds that Bob uses a role with read and write permissions to S3. Normally, finding out actual activity may be a time-consuming task, but with action last accessed, she can get a timestamp for each supported S3 action that the users and roles in her account have access to. She can see that Bob accessed S3 create bucket today, but has not used S3 create access point for the last 30 days and never used S3 put bucket policy in the tracking period. Martha then uses this information to identify the S3 actions that are not used, and she restricts access to these actions by updating the policies. Martha can also programmatically access this information using the AWS CLI, SDKs, or API endpoints if she wishes to automate the process. Let's see this in action. To view action last accessed information in the AWS Management Console, open the IAM Console. In the navigation pane, select Roles and choose the role that you want to analyze, for example, the admin role here. Select the Access Advisor tab. This tab displays all the AWS services to which this role has permissions. Look for Amazon S3 to view all the supported actions to which the role has permissions, when each action was last used by the role, and the AWS region in which it was used. In this example, Marta notices that admin role has read and write S3 permissions. She sees that the role is using read actions for get bucket tagging, get bucket policy, and get bucket logging. She also sees that the role hasn't used write permissions for put bucket policy, put encryption configuration, put bucket logging, and others in the last 30 days. Based on this information, Martha can notify Bob she identified unused permissions and later she can update policies and remove the right permissions by editing the role attached policies like so. I select the relevant policy, click edit policy, expand the S3 actions and then remove unused actions from the policy. Back at IAM Access Advisor, Marta sees that the delete bucket policy action shows not accessed in the tracking period, which means that the action was not used since I am started tracking action level access for S3 back at April 1st, 2020. Based on this information, Marta confidently removed this permission to further reduce permissions for the role. Additionally, Marta notices that an action she expected does not show up in the list. This can happen for two reasons. Either admin role does not have the permissions to the action, or IAM doesn't yet track access for the action to support last accessed information. In such a case, you should not update permissions for those actions based on action last accessed information. In many cases, 
you will want to automate this process and query action level last access information from your code. We've updated the existing service level APIs. These APIs now generate action last access details in addition to service last access details. Make sure you upgrade your CLI or SDK to support the action level granularity. In order to get this information from AWS CLI, I first execute AWS IAM generate service last access details and specify the principal ARN. I also specify the granularity action level parameter to get the action level detail. The command outputs a job ID, which I can then use for the AWS get service last access details command. Once I got the output, I can see that the job type is action level. I'm going to scroll down to Amazon S3. And here I can see the action level last access information under the tracked action last access key. Last access timestamps work in tandem with other IAM features that help you identify unintended access. For example, S3 Access Analyzer generates findings when your bucket policies and ACLs allow access to your buckets from outside your account or organization, helping you to protect your data. And raw last access information can help you clean up leftover principles that may create additional risk. By using last accessed information, you can review access for supported S3 actions, remove unused actions, and restrict access to the service. To learn more, visit the Action Last Access documentation.